For the first time in Game of Thrones' run, fans have universally disliked an entire season. There have been clear problems since the 5th season, where they made a major departure from the books, but I still really enjoy season 5 through 7, for the most part. The 8th and final season feels like a completely different show to me. There are a few contrarians out there who say they like the final season, but even they can't deny the pacing issues and character inconsistencies. If I were to rate the season out of 10, it would get a solid 4, and this is a show that started off as the greatest series ever made to me. I liked how they began the season with the first two episodes, having a slow build up and giving us a final reunion of all the characters, but it quickly looked pointless when the final antagonists were defeated in a flash. Six episodes was not enough to wrap up every character's story arc and give a satisfying conclusion. There were still some good moments sprinkled throughout the season, so I'm going to go through 10 of the best moments for me, but first, the 10 worst moments, which were not hard to find. These are in no particular order, but easily one of the biggest issues was the pacing. So number 10 is the most important moments in the series being dealt with in one episode. The war against the Night King and its endless dead army started and concluded in one episode. This should have been what the final season revolved around while having multiple battles, since there have been 7 seasons worth of build up. Danny vs Daenerys starting and concluding in one episode is fine, but the actual Game of Thrones with Jon and Daenerys could have been developed further. That was also dealt with in one episode. Number 9 is Arya's surprise attack. Arya being the one to deal the final strike is fine by me, but the Night King didn't even have a single sword fight. We'll never know what he's capable of since he didn't fight a high caliber fighter like Jon, Brienne, or the Hound. The Night King just got taken out moments before the battle was lost. Super lame. Arya should have assassinated him with her Valyrian steel dagger while he was distracted in a major fight. Number 8 is Bran's absence. The most powerful being aside from the Night King should have been a key player. Instead, he sat around doing nothing like usual. His story arc of all his trials and losses were pointless. Watching him in action could have been the highlight of the war against the Night King. Number 7 is the decision to not have past characters who died in previous seasons return as whites. So much of this season confuses me. Why were there not familiar faces on the side of the Night King, like Hodor or Summer? And since the war was only one episode long, current characters who died had no chance of returning. How was Theon and Jorah Mormont the most notable characters to die here anyways? Number 6 is Bronn's appearance at Winterfell. What a strange scene that was so inconsistent with his character. This is something he may have done in the first season, but he's grown close to Tyrion and Jaime and obviously care for them, even though he may not say it. His character has definitely developed, so why revert him back to a hired sword? Were we supposed to believe he would kill Tyrion and Jaime in that dumb scene? Number 5 is another character inconsistency. After all that bonding in the first 3 episodes, Jaime leaves Brienne and everyone behind to die with Cersei. She's hateful. And so am I. No real explanation for his betrayal. He just says he's just as hateful as Cersei. Judging by the previous seasons, we know that's not true. So he never got to become the anti-hero that his character was working towards and building up to be. And then comes number 4. I'm not a fan of Jaime being the one to kill Euron Greyjoy. He has proven time and time again to be an unstoppable major threat. A man missing his sword hand should not have been the one to kill him. The fight scene was so anticlimactic too. People have argued that Euron swam from the burning shipwreck to the shores of King's Landing and that's why he lost. But that doesn't fix this shitty rush scene for me. The scene that got everyone talking in episode 5 was Danny apparently going mad. Number 3 is Danny killing the innocents of King's Landing for no reason. The battle was over. This is another character inconsistency. For 7 seasons she was a caring leader and then in one episode she became a cruel monster. Number 2 is Rhaegal's death. It all happened so fast, and everyone moved on like nothing happened. Euron killed the dragon, that's a big deal. Number 1 is Bran becoming king. This was so dumb it was funny. This moment defines how strange the writing was for the season. Will you lead the Seven Kingdoms to the best of your abilities from this day until your last day? Why do you think I came all this way? Bran hasn't proved to be anything but a liability with no experience in ruling. So what does everyone do? Make him king. Dumb. I think that's enough of shit talking for one video, I should start talking about some of the things that I actually liked. 
I love the atmosphere the writers, directors, editors, actors, and everyone else involved created before the Battle of Winterfell. Number 10 is a calm before the storm. The show creators let other writers handle the first two episodes, and they really nailed the pacing. If only the rest of the season was heading to a better direction. Number 9 is Bran's reunion with Jamie. I love that moment when Bran tells Sam he's waiting for an old friend, and at the end of the first episode, we learn it was Jamie he was waiting for. Bran stays true to his character by keeping quiet about what he did to him so he can join in on the fight. I'm not that person anymore. You still would be. If you hadn't pushed me out of that window. And I would still be Brandon Stark. Why didn't you tell them? You won't be able to help us in this fight if I let them murder you first. Too bad Jamie didn't do much. Number 8 is Melisandre's contribution in the battle at Winterfell. Man, was she useful. From lighting all the Dothraki's weapons on fire, to igniting that barrier around the castle to save everyone. I just loved her conclusion. Number 7 is the dragon fight during the Battle of Winterfell. It may have been pretty dark and difficult to make everything out, but this was a great spectacle. It was 2 against 1, but Zombie Viserion was undead, so it was kind of evenly matched. This was definitely one of the standout moments of the season. I remember up until this point in the third episode, everything was great. It wouldn't be long until my mind was changed. Number 6 is Arya remaining true to her character. After saving the world, she could have had anything she wanted. Instead, she decided to quench her curiosity and sail west of Westeros, where she'll likely never return from this voyage, like many before her. I'm not going back north. Where are you going? What's west of Westeros? I don't know. No one knows. It's where all the maps start. That's where I'm going. I love that they didn't have her accept Gendry's marriage proposal. A one night stand was good enough for her. Number five is Clegainebow. This has been teased since the very first season, with that quick confrontation between the Hound and the Mountain during the tourney. The fight was intense, and it really looked like the end of the world was going down around them, while they stayed focused on wanting to kill each other. This was the only thing that drove the Hound. His character arc felt fulfilled, similarly to Melisandre's. Number four is Drogon's ending. He's always been the only dragon with any characterization, but this episode really expanded on it. Dragons are known to be very intelligent, and he was smart enough to understand Jon's actions and realize it was the Iron Throne that led Danny to an early grave. I'm surprised they didn't kill him off too. It was nice seeing him fly off to the east while carrying Daenerys. Westeros has only brought death for the dragons. Danny's death is my number three, even though I think they should have developed and expanded on this conflict since the show is called Game of Thrones, but the scene was shot and handled beautifully. You are my queen. Now. And always. I especially love the scene with Jon walking up to the ruins of the Red Keep, with Drogon buried in snow. Number two is Jon's conclusion. Jon has constantly been the world's punching bag, from his time in Winterfell with Catelyn hating him for being Ned's quote-unquote bastard, to his time in the Night's Watch where he was treated horribly. After everything he's been through, saving the world from the Night King and Danny's madness, nothing has changed. He remains to be a tragic character. The writers didn't take the easy route by making him the next king, and I'm happy he's with Ghost now. I was going to name that moment where he ditched his direwolf for no reason, one of the worst moments in the season, but the reunion made up for it. Jon being exiled even after everything he's done shows this was never going to have a happy ending. That's not what the story is. Number one is Brienne becoming the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard. I honestly thought she would become one of the characters who died and returned as a white because of how terrifying she would be as a zombie, but this ending was nice. It was fitting to have her fill in Jamie's deeds as the past Lord Commander, since he always dreamt of being heroic and loved by the people. She definitely made him out to look better than he deserved, however. Not sure if Podrick is qualified to be one of the Seven Kingsguard members, though. But all these good moments don't make up for the final season's serious writing problems. It speaks volumes when the creators, responsible for the final four episodes, say they want to get drunk and be far from the internet when the finale airs. It's like they saw this backlash coming. I would ask what you guys thought of the final season, but the vast majority of the comments in my recent videos have made it pretty clear. 
Hope you guys enjoyed my review and list. There's a lot more Game of Thrones and book related stuff I want to talk about. So this channel is going to keep on going. See you guys soon.